everybody out there in podcast land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Get Happy Podcast with Moi. That's right, your host. You've got me again. Sorry, not sorry, Rude Ronnie Davy. Hello. And today, I have a first timer, <laughs> a virgin, a new certified facilitator of access consciousness, like I think June or something of last year. And just for reference points, 2021, because it's now early February, 2022, but she's never done one of these types of interviews. So bear with us. We'll try to get through it. (laughs) Without further ado, please let me introduce you to the fabulous, wonderful potency of Catalina Berza. Hello, and thank you so much for being my guest on the Get Happy Podcast and for allowing me to totally do whatever that was that I just did now, introducing you. Thank you so much, Nani. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here. I actually became a certified facilitator, access consciousness certified facilitator in September of last year. Oh, September. My God, is she really is a virgin. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Like a virgin. Consciousness. Interviewed for the very first time. Like a virgin. Anyway, I digress. Oh. <laughs> well, as you can notice, this lovely lady has a very sexy accent, but she lives in Houston, Texas, y'all, with all them longhorn cows and all the things. So, girl, how in the world do you end up in Texas? Oh. Please. I am actually from Texas. I just like to fake my Texas accent. (laughs) (laughs) I like that even better. Um, Wow. I I was born and raised in Romania, in uh, Transylvania. Yeah. Transylvania? (laughs) Aren't there like wicked witches Uh, and things like that? And, And like warlocks and people with pointed teeth and stuff in Transylvania. Can we see your teeth? <laughs> yeah, I do have those two things. <laughs> you know, you have pretty good teeth, don't we? For those of you that are listening on Spotify or Apple, you're going to have to switch over to YouTube now if you want to see these fabulous <laughs> teeth we're talking about. So. want to see some vampire teeth, yes. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Transylvania. How does a woman from Transylvania or a young lady? Texas? Yeah, how does that happen? Um, I lived in Germany after Romania for some years. And uh, then um, 15 plus years ago, together with my husband at the time and our one-year-old daughter, we moved to Houston for work. We were um, geoscientists and geophysicists by training and he was a geologist. And uh, so from all the places in the world, <laughs> we were offered jobs in Texas, in Houston. Because they had huge brains, they were. It was a demandment to get them to the states because everything is big in Texas. So they wanted big brains, you know, to go along with everything else is bigger in Texas than anywhere else. Wow! So that's how you ended up there. I did not know this. It was actually a very funny story that um, after after I. Uh, after I found Access Consciousness, actually, I started realizing how much everything in my life has been a lot of the Access Consciousness tools. Oh. Uh, yeah, before that, I always, I've been told my whole life that I was lucky and that uh, everything for me was easy. Mm. And uh, <laughs> actually with Access, when, when I first heard the mantra of Access, all of life comes to me with joy and glory. I said, oh, wow, that was actually my life. You know, ease was not easy, but it was easy. So I could not put it into words, but that's what it was, you know, and joy and glory. And so what happened was I was, we were, uh, my ex-husband and I were doing uh, some uh, PhDs in uh, Hamburg, at the University of Hamburg. And we were towards finishing up I was pregnant. I was eight months pregnant with uh, our daughter. And uh, in the middle of the night, he, uh, he comes and wakes me up and he said, come and see something. And I go, he takes me to the kitchen and he shows me this email. 
uh, which says, uh, Philip, would you like to come and work for us in Houston, Texas? Mm. And I was, I mean, if you live in Europe or some other places, even in the US, right? There are so many projections and judgments and all that about Texas, right? And oh, yes. The <laughs> was from all the places in the world, why Texas, why Houston? And uh, so it wasn't necessarily our first option, but then mm. we moved here and then we liked it. First, we didn't like it and then we liked it and now I love it. Fantastic. It's really a fun place to be. I love it. You know, the, love one of the hubs yes. is actually in Houston. How lucky are you? I know. <laughs> created that i'm going to just use lucky since you did as well and i got coined with that lucky piece a lot as well people was like it's so easy for you to make friends or it's so easy for you to make money or it's so easy for you da, 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 da. and you know i i just kind of always just rolled with the energy and i realized also after i joined access that i was already kind of living the tools yes. i just wasn't cognitive that that's <laughs> what i was doing so, so much stuff made sense after starting to to know the tools of access. Like everything started to fall into place and there was no, not anymore. The, like the moment I started realizing that nothing happened to me, that I created <laughs> with it. Yeah. I said, wow, yes, it makes so much sense. You know, I was, I was, I think in my late thirties when I stopped and I said, okay, it cannot be all luck, you know? There must be some brilliance behind all this. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to create all of it. You know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It cannot be all luck. And then, uh, yes. So Access just showed me that it was all my creation. And I am so... That begs the next question, my dear. So... Okay, you get to use and it just so happens. And it wasn't always the hub. They started out in California, actually. And then they decided to, to move the mainstay at, uh, in Houston for many reasons. Um, and part of it was cattle, believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, and Dr. Dane here, the co-founder, they both love horses and riding horses. And they love really good meat and cattle and all this stuff. And so... There were a lot of people in Houston saying, why aren't you moving to Houston? And that they ended up there. You've heard different reason, obviously. Um, so how, when was it that your worlds collided as far as you know, now you're in Houston and Access is in Houston. And when did you actually discover Access Consciousness? Is there a story? I mean, some people, it's as simple as somebody inter, you know, had me come to a class or I saw something on YouTube. Or Is there something that you can definitively point to? That was actually your introduction to what is now, can't imagine, well, I don't know. I'll put words, words in your mouth. Wow. Can't imagine my life now without access consciousness. Yes. Well, I, I've been wondering, I've been wondering for a while, actually, what brought me to access. And still, even today, I mean, I, I still find myself finding reasons and justifications why I'm taking a class, why I became a certified facilitator, why I became a relationships done different certified facilitator. And I mean, the road to Texas, really, I don't even know if it started that day with that job offer. I, I was like 11 or 12 and uh, I've always been a rebel girl and I was always wild and doing things my own way and always, mm. you know, yeah, here we call it being a bad girl. <laughs> I'm not a bad girl, no. <laughs> <laughs> bad in a good way. You were, you know, I'm so bad because I'm going against <laughs> everything this reality tells me, but it's a good thing I did. So, yeah, so so I was like early teens, maybe even before that, when I said, you know, when I grow up, I really want to live somewhere where I can be myself without being judged. Oh, wow. And... That was, and then other, many, many other things and asks. It was communist Romania and nobody back then would have thought that that era would ever end. Right. And for me, it was like it never, it didn't really exist. I mean, I was just dreaming and dreaming and dreaming and asking. And um, so first, like the first time when I changed tracks was 
going to college, I wanted to study math, and I ended up studying geophysics. <laughs> like for it was a okay, that. <laughs> what a weirdo you are! <laughs> She's in Romania. I like math. I think I'm going to study geophysics. I don't know, and then maybe I'll. Wow, geophysics <laughs> just happened. Geophysics happened. Oh, and, oh, uh, just happened. <laughs> exactly. It was like okay, that. So I moved to Bucharest, Romania, and I, I studied geophysics. And then towards the end, I have uh, two siblings in Canada, a sister and a brother. And for us from Romania, the easiest would have been to, to move to Canada. Sure. It's a very easy process. So that was my plan. Okay, I graduate. I work for a year that was required in order for me to 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 have a residency, like a permanent residency for Canada. I started working in Bucharest as a geophysicist for a year. And then I applied for residency. And a month later, I met this guy who then became my boyfriend. And then he became my husband. So then I did not move to, instead of moving to Canada, I moved to Germany and I started a PhD there. Wow. Earth science. And so we both did that. And then we wanted to find jobs in Europe, of course, not in, I mean, U.S. was never part of the plan, never in my dreams. Of but course not. There was always that place, right? Like that place where, and I did not put anything to, you know, I just, I had the energy of the place, but never thought, oh, it's going to be on this continent or whatever. But however, I mean, Texas was not part of the plan and it was our last. You keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you actually know? Yes. Yeah. So that was my, was my life really a series of choices or was I pulled here for something much greater? Mm -hmm. I, I wonder I many times. I wonder too. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, then, so what another point in my life was 2015 when, um, so I was, we were both in the oil business. So I was in the oil business and 2015 towards the end had uh, massive layoffs. Wow. And uh, um, <clears throat> so did the company I was working for. And I remember I was a single mom with two small kids, relatively small, like 10 and eight or so, like somewhere there. And I said to myself, I will really have to keep this job. Hmm. And so I did. And what happened a month or two later, I bought a massage table. And I had no idea why I bought that massage table. I went into finding reasons why I did that. And then I put it in the closet and it stayed there until 2020. Oh. So in 2019, I have this, this friend of mine and she, she was my coworker at the time. And she had a friend who is, a, she told me she, she was a healer and she lives like five minutes away from me and she does also access consciousness. So she said, uh, you know, my friend does healing. I was suffering from migraines for 20 years, starting with 2000. And she said, you could go to my friend and see if she can help you. And I said, oh, healers, whatever. I did not go. So a year later was 2020, the summer of 2020. And when all this COVID stuff started, I knew that I was done with what I was doing. I knew that it was time for something new. Wow. So I was asking the universe what was for me out there that I would like to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that something was about to happen. Mm. So my friend told me again, it was the summer of 2020. And she said, you know, I went to my friend for, and she did this thing on me. You might want to try it. And I said, okay, I'm going to go. So I went to her and <laughs> she said, so do you know what this is? I said, no. I said, she said, oh, it's called access bars and you do this. And then there are 32 points on the head and touch them lightly. And so on. I don't even remember exactly what she was telling me. And I said, okay. Right. So I laid on the massage table. I did not have any expectation. I didn't even go for migraines, actually. I just went because I went there, you know? Because mm. you don't know anything. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when she touched my head, my body, I started feeling energy going through my body. And I said, 
what's going on here? You know, and then through the session, I started talking and I was talking and I was talking and I realized that for the first time, there was one person on this planet who got me, who knew what I was talking about. Because I was talking about the things that I've always perceived, but nobody would understand. People would always, whenever I would create something, people would tell me, oh, you are lucky. And I would show them that something got created, then they would not even believe it. I mean, they would see it and not believe it. And right. I go, oh, whatever, you don't want to believe it is fine. Yeah. Interesting. And so here's the, the laying on the table, she's running bars on you, which exactly what you said, 32 points on the head that when you touch them in different configurations, what they do is it's like a delete button, you guys, that maybe you're listening about bars for the first time. But these different groupings, um, it's about thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you have stored in your body for whatever reason. You've either aligned and agreed or you've resisted and reacted to these combinations of, of energies. And this process is like a delete button. It kind of diffuses that out of your world. So you feel like a different person afterwards and, and you are, you know, you're at the way Gary Douglas puts it, the founder of access. And he's the one that actually created access bars. It's like the best massage you've ever had with your clothes on at least, at least. you know, because, you know, the, the most is your whole life changes. Life change, yes. And it's, and it's subtle y'all. I mean, I was trading with somebody um, I was channeling at the time. So I would do a session for her and she would run my bars. And in the beginning, and this we're talking about 2003, I would just pass out. I didn't know what she was doing. I just knew that I felt great afterwards. And so I just kept doing it with her. I didn't get it. I didn't know what she was doing at all. But then one day I was like, I got to know more. So when was the moment that you knew you had to know more? Because here you are, you've had the session. I don't know if your migraines went away or not or what. Right away. Like. Two, two weeks later or so, wow. Wow. I started having migraines. And uh, then I told her that I wanted to go back for another session. And uh, actually, when I went there a second time, I told her that I wanted to learn that. And she uh -huh. said, well, I teach classes. So then I went for a class. And then uh, I said, well, how can I teach this? And then she said, you'll have to do three classes with three different facilitators. So <laughs> I did that. I did. A, I took a facelift class, and then it was. So this was end of 2020. And <clears throat> oh, what happened was that actually in the fall there were layoffs again, and wow. at, the, at the company I was working for. And I was telling my kids and my friends that I wanted to take a package, and because I. I knew I was done. I knew I was not going to be happy there anymore. And I was going to stop. And my kids said, mom, you cannot do this. You have a job that you love and you make a lot of money and stuff. And I said, well, I loved that job. It's not going to be the same ever. And right. uh, my daughter said, she was 15 at the time. And she said to me, but mom, uh, but how are we going to do this if you don't have the job anymore? And I said, Sweetie, I created that life, not the other way around. That was even before knowing the tools of access. Right. And, uh, and then I had pressure from everybody, from, you know, siblings and friends. And they said, you, you're crazy. You cannot do this. And I said, <laughs> okay. So I stopped, but I knew that the request was out there already. So uh, through a miracle, I got laid off and not many people got laid off. So it was really a miracle. Yeah, you had nobody nothing to do with that creation whatsoever. <laughs> so nobody could blame me for that. And right. uh, I, it, it was a perfect situation to be out of that and already being introduced to access, mm -hmm. perfect timing. And then in January, I said... Uh, okay, I'm going to take the foundation class because if I find another job, so people are still pressuring me. They're asking, oh, when are you going to look for a new job? And I said, well, I have one. And I said, no, we mean a real job. And I said, well, that's probably the most real is going to get. But then I, I still, you know, like somewhere you still feel uh, 
guilty and stuff. And uh, I said, I'm going to take the foundation class because if I get a real job, then I might not have time for a foundation class. And it oh, was- I love I love the reasons and justification. I, know. Yes. Yeah, and I, love, I better do it now because I'm going to have to get a real job later. And so there's no way I'm going to be able to continue this farce. When all my whole family, you know, knows that I'm doing these crazy things, which I, I, I love this crazy story. We had, we had to take a very quick break for my sponsor, but I have to know the rest of this. So you guys, hold tight. We'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsor. funky Debbie Essentials Pure Oil Blends can maximize your inner balance These 100% pure oil blends are designed to vibrationally open up the channels within the physical and multi-dimensional bodies Your body So if you're trying to find your groove let these pure essential oil blends work for you For more information, go to rudranidevi.com. That's R-U-D-R-A-N-I-D-E-V-I.com. And we're back. (laughs) Know that you guys have been going, oh my gosh, I have to know the rest of Catalina's story about this whole thing. And what is in the heck is foundation anyway? She just left us hanging in a lurch. What is foundation? Because now you get to teach those classes, as do I, as certified facilitators. And I don't know about you, but that's one of my favorite classes to teach because it's really not about building a foundation. It's about breaking down the foundation that this reality has taught us is real and true so that we can know what works for us. So how was foundation for you? Who did you take it from? Where'd you go? What all the things? Well, this is funny too. Um, So (laughs) I went to the Access Consciousness website and I looked for somebody who was on my time zone or slightly different, but not too much, not too different. And uh, could have a schedule that would fit my schedule. And I found Dr. Anthony Mattis. <laughs> what a terrible first introduction to foundation. <laughs> so Dr. I, Mattis, I, I adore him. I remember when he was first starting in Access and we took a three-day advance together in Hollywood, uh, Florida from, from, from the Gary Douglas. And he had just lost his wife to um uh gosh now i forgot uh to suicide she had she committed yeah. suicide and so here's with three really young children and one was one of hers from a previous marriage and but he had what an amazing beautiful soul he yes. is so, so i love how you just that class was amazing uh so my first thought was oh my god i'm gonna be for four days in an online class it's gonna be painful but i have to take it <laughs> I might not be able to take it if I don't take it now because I will have to have a real job and none of this is real. Yes. So, all so, the, yeah. so I go to the class and I cannot tell you, Rudrani, I could not wait every day for the next day. Mm. And I, it was something that I cannot even describe. Was It's unbelievable that class is like breaking. Yes, exactly. Breaking the foundation of our reality, the way we've been functioning from, but also to, to hear that you you find people who are like you. I know. <laughs> who talk like you and you are not being made wrong for talking like that. Mm-hmm. People who I realize, actually I realized recently that I've been speaking energy my whole life and I was made wrong for that. I was called rude and I was called, uh, you know, like, hurting people's feelings and all that. And now I realize how aware was I of people's universes and what was in their heads and how I would pick that up and I say it out loud. I have no filter. So it was a lot of fun to see other people who had no filter. And, right. <laughs> and after the class, there was something that I, I was not familiar with. There was space. I realized much later that I had so much space and I got, I did not know what to do with it. Because oh. as a single mom starting with 2010, I was in a constant doing, I was doing things after things, kids, 
school, work, dog, house, all that. And I had so much space. And I got into a, I don't know, not depression, but something very weird. I did not know who I was. And I, I went again to the Access Consciousness website and I see choice of possibilities. And I said, I don't know what this is, but I have to take it. <laughs> I ended up, it was end of March in uh, Brandon Watts um, choice of possibility class. I was online in Houston and this class was in, he was live in, from Florida. And that class was like, yeah. yeah, that's like next I level. Even, yeah, it's a next level, exactly. I, I didn't know who I was anymore. And then I took a three-day body class in Houston. It was very nice to see people live and to touch people. And, to, you know, was not being made wrong for everything that I knew was true for me. Right. Mm-hmm. And then everything else is history. Like, uh, yes, many, many, many wonderful things happened. Well, what I love about your story is your knowing. Because that's the tagline in Access anyway, you know. Uh, all my life comes to me with ease and joy and glory and showing you that you know. Yes. Teaching you that you know that you know what works for you. There's this heavy light tool that we use, you guys, in Access, where basically if it makes you feel lighter, that's, that's the direction to go. And if it makes you feel heavier, it's not true for you. And what I love about Catalina's story is that she literally – followed the energy yes. of what was going to work for her. And, and then when she decided to be a CF, she was like, you know, I, I should probably check out and see which prerequisites I need. And then she found that she had already taken most of them. Am I correct about that? You- that, that was about maestro. That was for maestro. Um, uh-huh. So access consciousness maestro, which I did not know what it was. I didn't even know that there was such thing. So right, right. I, 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 I love the energy me? class. The highest level energy class you can take. And the only way you can take it is if you've had every other energy class and all the top of the food chain classes. And here's somebody that discovers access in 2020. Yes. And then decides to be a facilitator in 2021. It was after the choice of possibility class. I said, I have to be a CF. I didn't know what a CF was really. Yeah. But I knew that I had to be one. And then somebody asked me, why do you want to be a CF? Do you want to teach foundation? And I said, I don't know. So I you're started. You're following energy. Just acknowledge it. Just- <laughs> you're following energy. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I just wanted to be a bars facilitator for every, forever. I taught body processes classes. I was all about the processes. Facelift, all the things. And so what I would do is I would host somebody every year to teach foundation so that I could keep all those other licenses because that was one of the prerequisites and foundation changes every year because at global foundation, Gary and Dane take out what's not relevant anymore. And they put in other stuff. So anytime you take these classes and you can take them multiple times, they're going to be different, different facilitator, different people in the classes. And that's what creates the energy of it. But what finally happened was, I don't know, maybe it was the fourth time or fifth time I had hosted the class and I'm practically co-facilitating the class. And one of the people in the class said, I don't know why you're not teaching this class. You know more than she does. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> but because I knew the heavy light tool, my whole body lit up and I knew that they were right. Or at least it was true for me. And I went, wait a minute. Why am I not doing this? I love this class. I would love to facilitate this class. Why don't I, why don't I look into it? And like you... I had been in, well, I had been in Access long enough since 2003 is when I discovered it to have had most of what was required. And so I just leapt in and I've, you know, I've, I haven't gone, I haven't looked back, have not looked back. And it was really COVID. What a gift COVID was because I've met so many people. I don't know if I would have met you if it hadn't been for COVID. You wouldn't yeah. have, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I would be still in the corporate world probably. Right. So, you know, what if everything that this is and everything this be and everything that it created was actually what we were looking for showing up in a yes. way we never expected? Yes, exactly. I mean, I'm so grateful. I wouldn't have had this life if it was for the choices that I wanted to make. Not, not choices, for my plans. 
Right, right. I would always make a plan and then the universe would say, mm, you can have that or right yes and it was, you really so, want it was so irresistible you know it like the energy you said i followed the energy it was more like the energy was pulling me so hard that i could not say no <laughs> <laughs> and still is, still is. <laughs> okay if you guys are watching on youtube i just took my fanciful scarf and yanked myself <laughs> off the screen like it's pulling me so hard, but I know the feeling. I know, I know my friends were like, what are these classes you're taking? You're flying all over the world, taking these class. What the, what in the world are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Cause here was, a, you know, I, I had my own healing practice already under several other modalities, but I'd had access in my back pocket for a long time. And I was always, you know, facilitating and doing verbal processing as part of my practice. I did tapping and tuning forks and just a lot of other modalities. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this stuff works so much faster. My world is changing. And it was just so much fun for me. It's like my two favorite things are facilitating classes and being facilitated in classes. I yes. love it. Yes. And so there you are, you're running around in, in all these different directions and you don't even know why you're doing it other than it's fun for you and nurturing for you. And your life is changing. You're happier. The people by osmosis are happier around you and you can't even put a finger on it because that's how I was. They're like, why are you taking this? These classes are so expensive because you have to fly to different countries. I'm like, yeah, you can see I'm really suffering. I actually really enjoy going to other <laughs> countries and trying cuisines from other places around the world. And Right before the, show, I mean, 2020 was going to be my year. I had six classes scheduled in other countries with people already signed up and ready to go. I was already looking at the pool that I was going to put in my backyard. I was spending my money before I'd even made it, which didn't actually happen. So I was like, what's right about this? I'm not getting when it didn't come to fruition because first I moved the classes and then they started getting canceled. But then I started meeting people like you and things shifted. And I thought, wow, this happenstance is creating me in a way that I never dreamed of either. I'm more me than I've ever been, yes. than I've ever been, which I don't know, even as a facilitator for as long as I had been, if I would have been privy to that, if I would have known that, I didn't realize how many points of view I still had. Or the righteousness I still had of, you know, oh, I'm a da 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 da, do this, and the rest of the world should. Because, you know, as I know, there are people that try to talk you out of things because, you know, I knew about this. <laughs> under the guise of, you know, we love you very much. Mom, how can you possibly leave this job? Yes. And that it's creating more because you're following your knowing. And then again, you wouldn't want to turn around and tell somebody else what to do either. You know, your choice is your choice is your choice. And I go through it with my family all the time. They don't get it. Why I choose what I choose. Because it seems really out of control. And um, <clears throat> yeah. What do well, you guys say about that? What is happening is um, in 2020 and then 2021, I lost so many people in my life. Like they were not, they were walking away <laughs> from my life because uh, I, I mean, I've always been kind of uncomfortable to my friends, you know, and to everybody. They were still stick around. But now I am in their eyes very weird or very, not even weird. I mean, I'm not weird. I'm just different, I guess, you know. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs is a term I like to use. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It's like you're so <laughs> different that they can't find you. Exactly. They, they can't put you in any box, you know, and every day you are different from the day before. And that's what they don't know who you are, where you are. Are So it's, they're not bothering me anymore with questions because (laughs) they're not there anymore. So I have new friends I have, and my family knows they even keep quiet or I will, you know, I don't have to talk to people if they don't. Yeah. Gary says, sometimes you just have to shut up and walk away. Exactly. If they can't receive you, they can't receive you. And if you don't care anyway, whether they receive you or not, then you're truly free. Yes, yes. No? I love it. Wow. So now you're a certified facilitator. Yes. Uh, but the other thing is, I have always had the energy of the future, right? Like with a massage table in 2015, I already, what did I know when I 
bonded my massage table and I knew I was not ready for access, but I was ready for, but I was somehow, you know. And then when I started taking classes and I would hear them talk, I like those things were in my, my universe too. Like I, I heard Brandon Watts saying the choice of possibilities Whenever you guys don't know what to do, just ask the universe, say, universe, show me the way. And I jumped from the couch. I, couch. I said, oh, my God, he says that too? Yeah. You know, like there were, there were so many things that were already in my world. And how aware was I of them or how, how much do we co-create, right? And sure. like I knew that I will be doing something. Retirement was never in my universe I mean <laughs> Same. I died. but I knew that after probably after my kids would be out of school and college and so on I would be doing something else and that something else was always would involve traveling the world and mm-hmm. being on stage and teaching and doing something that was I couldn't say healing I you know I could not put words to but I knew that there was something like contributing to people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think that that would happen now, you know, it was like, we make plans. We think, oh, this is going to be whenever I think I'm ready. Actually, I was ready much sooner. Yeah, I'm a late bloomer, I like to say, but I realize that every decision I've ever made, every choice I've ever done, everything that I've ever been led me to this moment now. And I've done some pretty crazy things. I mean, I was a professional amateur athlete running marathons. Okay, like over 200 half marathons, um, bodybuilder. Um, I taught banjo, violin, and piano for a while. I also taught dance. I mean, I'm all over the, all over the place. I wanted to be a singer, dancer, actress, whatever. And I kind of get to do all of that, <laughs> even facilitating the classes. Because even as a singer and a performer, you know, when I couldn't perform, I would just pull out my microphone. And sing in a class. I was like, if you can't handle me just breaking out a song, this might not be the class for you. And so, you know, here you are, CF. You don't know how you got there, but you do. I just want you to acknowledge that. And then we're in a relationship, done different class together for a certification. I'm re-upping and you're becoming a relationship done different certified facilitator, which I love teaching those classes. Yes. I know you're ready to do Watch it. it. I've got an intro class. It will have already passed by the time this uh, is being listened to, but I love watching people's worlds change and there's no prerequisites for those classes. So they're great intros to access anyway, because they're like, who is this weirdo? I kind of like these ideas, all the stuff. But here we are. I, I do a throwaway line about a class I'm getting ready to facilitate and that's how we connect. And I see it on the chat. Yes. And I said, wow, that. Mm. So just for the rest of you guys, I got um, certified to teach what's called a specialty class. You have to reach out to the powers that be and say, hey, I want to create this class using the access tools. And they look through, they look through everything, the graphics and the wording and all that. And then they either approve it or they don't approve it. Sometimes they give you clues to how they would approve it. But um, from what I understand, a lot of the classes don't get approved. So I feel really fortunate. I have three specialized classes and I have five more now that I've just introduced to see if I can get those done. Because to me, there's so many other ways of finding access and changing your world. And in this particular class, this is what I noticed. I have a one access consciousness uh, book. In other words, it was published by Access Consciousness Publishing. I have three books. I'm working on two more. But what would always come up without fail, anytime I was being interviewed for choosing happiness, <laughs> an uncommon way to find joy in your life, which is the reason why there is a Get Happy podcast. And, you know, happiness is just a choice. So I would always have people asking me, how in the world did you write this book? And I'm like, oh, I listen to the whispers. Like anything else, I'm following the energy. But nobody ever really got what I was saying. And they kept saying, you need to teach a class. You need to teach a class. So, you know, I, I reached out to Gary Douglas, the founder. The, you know, it's his fault we're talking. And you guys are listening. And I was in the middle of a CF class, the first one, sitting in a splash zone in Costa Rica, like right across from him. And I texted him and said, what would it take for me to write an Access 101 book for those that are in Access trying to explain to their fr- family and friends 
what this weird thing is that they're doing. And he just texted me back two words, choose bitch. And I went, okay, that's <laughs> just like Gary, doesn't it? Little wedgie. And I was like, okay, that's permission. All right. And then I started asking the whispers to start talking to me. So then the whispers were saying, you really do need to teach this class. And I had seven people that said they would host me. I'm not joking. I'm not making this number up. Seven people that said, if you teach this class, I will host you. And I went, well, okay, maybe there's a demand for it. So I created the class last, oh my gosh, last March, not the one coming up because it's, it's February of 2022, March of 2021. I created it. It got approved. Not one of them stepped forward. And it wasn't until recently somebody said, okay, I have really got to write. I, and they held up a sticky note. We were doing one of these kinds of deals and they said, write like your life depends on it. And I said, okay, you want to host me for a class? Sure. So that's how that class even got created. And um, not one of those seven people were in the class. Cognitively, right? <laughs> that's very <how> interesting. <laughs> You're so powerful. You had other people create the class for you. Then I do a throwaway line in the feed about how I was so excited that I'd just been approved with the class. And a friend gave you, you go on, because I could tell the story, but I want to hear how it transpired for you. You saw that. You told a friend they gave you a journal or something. I don't know. I don't remember now exactly how the story oh, goes. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, let me go backwards a little bit. It was at the Global Foundation last year when I met a um, um, Romanian lady in Access who was just finishing up a book and I asked her, how does she write? And she was telling me about the course that she was taking and so on. And I said, oh, okay, maybe at some point in the future, I'm going to do that too. I mean, writing has always been, since I was little, I wanted to write. And actually I wrote and then I threw it away because I could not take people's judgments. I could not have anyone read it. And I realized that after a year in access and taking classes and really shifting my reality a lot and getting rid of points of view and judgments. First of all, not judging myself anymore for who I am, you know, and that's and, big, you know. And, you know, it's very big. It, it is very big. And also for, you know, being vulnerable and showing people who you are and not having a point of view if they like you or not. Right. I used to be like that. And then I, I would move away from that more and more until I didn't even know who I was. And actually, can I just like say quickly, there was a one point that was really, really big for me it was June of last year. And you were in that class of Symphony, Symphony of Possibilities. It was the first Symphony of Possibilities class in Houston with Dr. Dane here. And um, I was there because it was a prerequisite to become a CF. And I did not take an energetic synthesis of being. So I did not know what that class was about. I didn't know anything about the class. Mm -hmm. So I ended up on stage and receiving a session uh, from- I remember group. that now. I do remember and that. And that changed my life completely. That, that moment and everything, all the classes before, you know, they were, because I was thinking relationships done different before, talk to the entities, three day body classes, and so on, but so it prepared me for that. And afterwards I started judging my body less and less mm -hmm. until really I have very little point of view about judging myself. And I'm mm -hmm. ready to, I realize now that I'm ready to, to write. And when I saw your class, I realized, wow, this is the moment for that. And because it would not go away from, you know, like I saw that and I, I reached out to you and I said that I was interested, I wanted to take your class. And then a friend of mine gave me as a Christmas gift, a journal, a, a notebook, a notebook. Mm -hmm. I said, really, what did you know? I, I'm just about to sign up for this writing class. And then the day, the Christmas day, I received an email from a client telling me she was in a, a symphony taster, group taster. So symphony of possibilities, group taster. And she said that it so much changed whatever she was in, in the middle of. 
and she said, please write about this. Keep all this, all the recordings, and please write a book about this. If you haven't yet, please consider doing it. And I said, what do you know? I started last <laughs> night. I started writing last night on the notebook that I received from my friend. And in a week, I will be taking a how to become a writer class. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's how it happens when you make a decision you guys the universe hears you by the way it has your back and yeah. it's funny how everything starts to fall into place and I love how you kept saying what do you know well, what do you know how did you know that I was thinking of doing this and but but that's how the this co-creation works yes, yes. that's how the whispers work if you're and, and you can always unchoose it it's not like because you say, I'm going to write a book, it has to happen. But if you have that inkling to become a writer, that means you've already written something. The and book. It's a matter of pulling it in. Yeah. That's what I know. I know that choosing happiness only took me one week to write the meat of it. The last chapter came a week later, and then I did the fine tuning. But with all of my writing, it's, it's just that I've been so open to the co-creation of it all. So I know you're working on a book. In fact, this is what ended up happening. We did our three um, telecalls and then uh, and it was a small but mighty group. And I think I'm going to have to keep them small because it makes it so, I don't know, there, it, there's so much and the creation is a co-creation with everybody involved. But four of the six decided to keep going and you're one of them. And it's been amazing to see what's happening now because now we have six more well, I think we have four left out of the six telecalls and, and I've gotten to listen to some of your writing now. Um, so this is just for you guys in the future that are looking to purchase uh, Catalina Berza <laughs> new book in the making that we are birthing as we speak. Maybe by the time you hear this, it's already written. Who knows? We don't know yet. Do you want to give them a little teaser? about what this book is going to be about? Because I could talk to you forever, but we actually really need to wind this up soon. So I want them to know a little bit about what, uh, now we're putting it out there, now you have to write it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, another thing is I, I've always had the point of view that because uh, my first language is not English, <laughs> and then I took a, a Write Voice for You class and I became aware that my first language is energy, Mm -hmm. So I got over that point of view that uh, my accent is weird or my English is weird or my whatever is weird and I don't go into my head anymore so I speak energy and right. uh, I, I've always had a point of view but if I'm going to write in English my English is not going to be that sophisticated for people to read then I realized but who do I want to write a book for, really? I mean, don't I want to reach the whole world? And I, I have no point of view about how educated or uneducated people are. For me, it's, it's about being aware and being kind and being wonderful, you know, and being willing to change. Yeah. It's about, so this book is about how my life has been the tools of access consciousness and how of how much I have become aware of and how access transformed my life. Mm -hmm. and how much faster things are changing for me since I've known access and right. all the wonderful people. And, and it's not just about the wonderful people, it's about all energies because we, we split people into who is amazing and who is terrible and who is not. And in mm -hmm. actuality, it's everybody contributing to who we are because it, when we don't like somebody... Maybe there is something hidden in us that we don't want to look at, that mm -hmm. maybe we should look at, you know? And if we really, if we choose this journey of consciousness, it's funny because a year ago, I didn't even know what consciousness was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We, we have very interesting points of view about what consciousness <laughs> is. And a lot of people think it's just being awake. Oh, I'm conscious because I'm awake. When I'm sleeping, I'm unconscious. And sometimes you're more conscious when you're sleeping than when you're awake. Yes. <laughs> Reality. But that's a whole nother show. <laughs> yes. I promise you. 
So I promise you. But basically, you know, consciousness includes everything and excludes nothing. Yes. And and so, today it's just, it's gonna be called living the magic. I like it. I like that a lot. So stay tuned. Yes. We're gonna have her as a repeat offender because once this book is done, you'll be back on the show and we'll be promoting it. <laughs> that is a promise. That's a promise. <laughs> so before we go, I have to ask you this question because it is the Get Happy Podcast. That is the title of this podcast. So Catalina. Tell our listeners, please, if you would, how do you get your happy on? I have it on. <laughs> All the where, where are you wearing it? Is it your dress? Is your dress name happy? <laughs> I function from happiness and I realize that every time that I think I'm not happy, it's because I'm picking up on other people's Thoughts, feelings, emotions, realities, words. Yeah. I am happy. Actually, just to finish up with this, when I was two or three years old, I used to sing. To, I loved singing and uh, I loved poetry. And uh, I would tell my family, I would put on a show and I said, and now I'm going to make you all laugh. And uh, so... I know that whenever I don't look like I'm happy, it's because I'm not me. So, uh, yeah, our true nature. I've said this so many times, and I am a right voice facilitator. And initially, that class was created for public speakers and singers, but now it's really more about it's kind of like a being you class on steroids because you actually have to step into all of who you be without apology which is what I, I totally love about it. But the, the getting back to the piece you were saying, your true nature is to be happy. Yes. You know, we actually are on, I, I believe on some level we're born happy and then we unlearn it <laughs> somehow, somehow. And a lot of it is picking up on maybe your mother's unhappiness, your father's unhappiness, your siblings or the people around you and you misidentify and misapply it as yours. But if the thing is, is, you guys, for those of you who can actually see this on YouTube, I'm holding up a little red cap that says, happiness is just a choice. Maybe, you know, Rudrani, maybe it's not even, maybe it's not, we don't even unlearn it. Maybe it's just hidden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. True story. Because it's right there. Yes. It's right there. It's not something that you have to seek. It's not something where you have to achieve certain things to have it. You know, you don't have to contemplate your navel and fast for a week and all these other things to find your happiness. It's actually within you. Yes. And it's a matter of um, using it. Yeah. Let's find that and access that and access. Oh, my goodness. Access. Let's access our happiness. Let's access consciousness. Yes. You know, sometimes consciousness is a little uncomfortable. <laughs> sometimes it can make your butt itch. But I'll be square straight up with y'all. I would rather have my butt itch and be conscious than to be unconscious and unhappy in this here reality. So chew on that. True story. Yes. <laughs> oh my goddess. I love your laugh, by the way. Your laugh is infectious. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goddess. I can't wait. Next time we're in Houston at the same time, we got to hug each other's bodies. Yes. For reals. And I do remember you. You being at, it was, it was an SOP. It wasn't ESV. Yeah. I do remember you being there and on the table. I do remember that now. I do. I do. So, um, okay. So where could the peeps find you if they were looking for you? Where could they go? And we'll make sure we have the info. Uh, Access consciousness website. I have a public profile there. And then there is katarinaburza.com. Yes. I'll make sure to spell it because I know that sounded like crazy talk coming out of her mouth. T-A-L-I-N-A-B-I-R-Z-A at dot com. There you go. There you have it. And there you be. Thank you so much. This wasn't so bad for your first time, was it? (laughs) Thank you. I think you actually really enjoyed it. It was so much fun, actually. (laughs) Thank you. I'm very, very grateful for you inviting me to this. I'm and grateful to have you here. I had a great time. Thank me you. Me too. Thank you right back. And if you guys enjoyed this, 
please share this conversation with someone you sense this could be a contribution to. Um, if you haven't yet, and you've been digging these conversations, click the subscribe button below. And I'll make sure all the info is there so you can know more about Miss Catalina. And um, if you have any questions, I do read all the comments. If you'd like something in particular for us to talk about, let me know. All the things, y'all. All the things. So thank you again for being my lovely guest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vidrani, for having mm-hmm. me. Absolutely. And until next time, you guys, ciao, ciao for now. Bye. <laughs> Bye.